The key to producing incredible photos and videos is the editing process, but it can be a time-consuming and laborious process that ends with you staring at a screen and clicking and dragging around sliders for hours on end. So what if I could save you hours of time and make it more fun in the process? Well, this is the Tourbox Elite Plus, and it has completely revolutionized the way I edit photos and videos. Today, I'm gonna show you how I set this thing up, why you need one, and how it can save you hours on your own edits. Let's get it. Okay, so what the heck is this Tourbox thing anyway? Well, it may look like a video game controller, but it's actually a powerful editing console built with deep software features for creative applications. You can connect it wirelessly or wired to your computer or even an iPad and use it to speed up your editing workflow. Rather than memorizing keyboard shortcuts, you get this tactile responsive feel that actually makes the editing process much more enjoyable. In addition to also saving you a ton of time, it's much more ergonomic and you basically never need to move your hands from the, you know, your left hand on the tour box and then your right hand just stays on your mouse. You also have this haptic feedback as you kind of turn the knobs and dials and press the switches and you can customize all of that within the tour box console as well. So maybe let's check out the tour box console here and see how we customize everything. Once it's connected, we just come into our tour box console UI and then you'll see here under the preset list, we have a ton of different editing programs already built out for us. Another nice thing is if we have this auto switching enabled, as we switch between the programs, it will automatically switch our presets between the programs as well. Now again, straight out of the box, this is pretty much set up and ready to go, but if you do have a few things that you know you're gonna be doing super frequently, you can adjust those things in the settings. So like if I wanna reprogram this to be something, I just go in here and reprogram it. I've made a fair number of changes to mine, but I've actually exported all of my settings for Lightroom Classic. So if you want to set yours up the same way that I have it here, you can download those for free at the link in the description. But as a really quick breakdown, you basically have your main knob here to scroll through your settings. And maybe I wanna adjust like the sensitivity of this. I could go medium or I can go slow. Let's just stick with medium for now. And you can adjust the haptic feedback as well. These larger buttons are set to you know, this one's set to command, this one's shift, this one's opt, uh, this one's to open up the hub, this one's option, or you can do like a double press to open up the crop, for example. And then the main, the kind of pulling up your settings is gonna come from these uh, arrow pads. So if I press up, that's gonna do my basic adjustments, downs, calibration, presence, color mixer. Uh, and then if I do shift and those things, that's gonna pull up all of my masks and then side button and those things is going to intersect and subtract my masks and we'll get to that in just a second. C1 and C2 are to undo and redo just in case you make a couple of mistakes. One last thing I wanna show you in the Tourbox console UI real quick. So if we press up, that pulls up my basic adjustments. Now, you can adjust which things come up when you press up. And so like, for example, if you just wanted your normal stuff, that'd be like exposure down to blacks. What I like to do is have kind of all of the basic settings in one panel. So I can adjust here, or I can even like move these around. Like say I wanna have like exposure come up first. I can move all of this around and completely adjust how I want that dynamic panel to appear. Now let's pop into Lightroom and we can start editing this photo. So this small button here, I have programmed to my presets. If you're like me, you've made a bunch of your own presets, you've downloaded or purchased a bunch of presets, but there's always those that you use more often. Well, all of my most used ones are in here. You know, and we have a bunch in here that you could actually download for free. So like Filmic, Azorian Coast, those are linked for free at the link in the description. You can download them, use them to your heart's content. And as just a free way to say thank you, you could consider hitting subscribe if you haven't already. That would be swell. But what we're gonna use is we're gonna use this general. This, it just does some really basic tone curves and adjustments and stuff. Now we'll pop open our basic adjustments. That's just on up on the keyboard. And again, you'll see that whole panel that we just talked about is all right there. These panels, you can also move around, which is super fun. You can move this over here. You could actually even move it over to a second screen if you wanted to. Same with this one, this little arrow, this is just gonna tell you what the arrows will control. And as I press shift, it adjusts to show you what those arrows will also pull up. The nice thing about having these kind of hovering, floating things is you don't have to have these big, huge panels on the side, right? So if you're on a smaller screen or you're traveling, you don't have to worry about any of that, which is sweet. Let's start going through and making some adjustments. 
First things first, I'm gonna increase our exposure because this is a little bit too dark. I'm gonna probably cool this off a little bit, maybe somewhere around like 6,800. And then I wanna bring out some of the kind of pinks that we have in there. So I'll do that there. I'm gonna take away a little bit of contrast. We're gonna bring back some of our highlights, maybe up our shadows a touch, bring down some whites, I like to have some punchier blacks. I like to bring down the clarity just a touch. This is shot on the 100 megapixel Hasselblad. So, you know, having it too much clarity can be a little bit much. And then I always like to bring up the vibrance, but then bring down the saturation. I think that ends up with a good look. We can see the before and after that we have already. Next thing I'm gonna do is my color mixer. So I just press right on the key, keypad, and then I can do all of that color mixing stuff here. Despite the tour box making this a pretty easy process, it doesn't make for the most compelling content. So I'm just gonna speed this up here, and then I'll leave all of the settings in a screenshot on the right side of the screen in case you wanna copy them. Okay, now that we have that done, I'm also noticing here that we need to rotate this to make the horizon level, because nothing is grosser than a not level horizon. This looks pretty good, we could stop here, but I have found in my many years of editing that what really makes an edit come to life is not these global adjustments, it's the local adjustments. And those are done with masks, which is why I have so much of my tour box set up to masking. So I'm gonna start with a radial filter. I want to kind of brighten up the center of my image. And then I wanna do the opposite. So I wanna do a larger radial gradient and I wanna darken up the outer parts, which I can invert that mask and then darken that up a little bit. And I like to go a little bit more intense with it as well. So let's do another graduated filter. I'll come down here. I'm gonna darken up these bottom parts. So we really wanna draw the eye towards our subject. We wanna think about our subject is out here. So we want that to be brighter and then the other parts to be darker. We could even also do some radial gradients over here to kind of mimic some sunlight coming in. So if I add some temperature uh, and then do some like negative clarity, negative dehaze, that sort of mimics what sunlight looks like. And if we build upon these, we do a few of these, do some negative again. Now I don't want it to impact this darker part of the image. So I'm actually going to intersect this with a luminance range. And I want it to like only be going after these kind of brighter parts. So now it's not hitting this part, but it is hitting all the stuff up here. And then this is kind of all getting a little bit washed out as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a graduated filter. I'm just gonna decrease our exposure. I want to also maybe add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of saturation. And then I don't want it to impact this portion. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna intersect this with sky. So I'm going to do shift and then there, and that will just automatically do the sky. And then you can see where this overlay is. It's just impacting this sky portion and it's doing it more on the top and less on the bottom. I think that's pretty good. We can also like do some dodging and burning as well. So I'll do an adjustment brush. I want to get a little bit more color in here on the sky. So let's paint in a little bit here. I just wanna bring in that kind of like richer color that we have. So I'll do a little bit warmth. I'll do a little bit of pink, do a little bit of saturation. And then I'm gonna intersect that with a color range and just do this kind of sky color. So that's only hitting the pinks and not the blues, for example, kind of helping us to color inside the lines a little bit. We could do that same thing here as well if I want to dodge and burn my kind of highlights. I'm just gonna do some kind of brushing to increase the pop on those highlights. So maybe again, we'll kind of bring up some exposure. We'll do a little bit of warmth and then maybe we'll also do a teeny bit of that negative clarity, negative dehaze. And then we could do the opposite as well. I'll do, this is the burning part. So I'll, I'm just gonna paint in some like darkness. I'm gonna go a little bit overboard at first just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. I'm just painting in some of this like, just the darker parts. I just wanna add some like very selective contrast rather than dragging the contrast slider. I'm picking and choosing where I want that added contrast to be. You saw what it looked like before, but look at what the before and after is on just those masks. 
Masks are really what makes your photo edit pop. Now, I also mentioned that you can automatically switch between programs. So if we just switch over to DaVinci Resolve, you'll notice at the top here, it's swapped over to the preset of DaVinci Resolve. I could probably do multi-part videos on just DaVinci Resolve editing with the tour box. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments. But easily my biggest time saver is to help with cutting a roll. So I'll use this short button as my kind of play pause. And then I'll use the wheel to just scrub through individual frames. And then I use the arrow keys to do my cuts. So like, for example, I know I want to remove this portion because there's no talking there. I can just kind of scroll over to that spot. I hit the cut and then I want to come over to this spot and then I want to just cut out all that dead space. I just hit that arrow and it ripples delete back to it. I want to cut out this portion and then I also want to cut out this portion, I can ripple delete forward. Maybe I wanted to cut out this portion. I hit just that, deletes that whole bit, moves it all over. This is a huge, huge time saver. And then get to the more important part of editing, which is like the creative piece, the adding in the B-roll, doing the graphics, all that stuff. Cutting A-roll is like super boring. This makes it so, so much easier. All of this is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the tour box. You can do a ton of complex macros and functions as well. Plus, you can program it to any number of applications. It really is an incredible tool to improve your workflow and speed up and make even the most tedious tasks of editing fun and tactile. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can get yourself a Toolbox Elite Plus and a huge shout out to Toolbox for providing this and making this video possible. Thank you for sponsoring. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.